1994, 1995, I was backstage at the Grand Ole Opry with a lot of frequency. Being a member of the legendary and iconic Drifting Cowboys afforded me this opportunity, places to go that a young musician would have never had the benefit and privilege to go. And it wasn't because I was or am somebody, but it was because of who I was playing with and who I was associated with. Mr. Don Helms and Jerry Rivers to this day, legendary names in the world of country music and some of the most respected musicians that have ever walked the face of the earth. Playing behind one of the most legendary names to ever put a footprint in music, Mr. Hank Williams. So when I joined up with the Cowboys in 1994 as a guitar player and made my way to the Grand Ole Opry by calling the backstage and saying, hey, uh, I'd like to come there this evening time, and and I'm Dan Fermanick, and they'd say, well, yeah, Dan, who are you? And I said, well, I'm a member of the Drifting Cowboys. They'd go, oh, heck, tell Don and Jerry I said hello, and yes, you're on the list. Well, that happened, folks, quite a bit. <laughs> so, needless to say, I was eager, and I took advantage of that just to be around some of the greats, in my mind, that have ever graced the stage of that legendary place. And one night, I was in dressing room three, which is the dressing room of little Jimmy Dickens. And every dressing room had a number and was associated with some country music icon. Dressing room number one was Mr. Roy Acuff's. Dressing room 12, Porter Wagner's, and so on and so on. But dressing room three, well, that was little Jimmy Dickens' dressing room. And I would knock on the door and open it easy and I'd see Mr. Jim, all four foot eleven of them, and the rest of the boys if they were in there, and I'd go on in and how do. Tell them Don and Jerry said hello and they'd ask me how everybody was doing and I'd tell them and then, you know, I'd inevitably have a guitar or grab somebody's guitar and try to spur some things on to get these guys to play. You gotta realize that these people have been doing it for a very, very, very long time and jamming was not something that they did much anymore. But, heck, I couldn't help it. There they were, these people that I had learned music from. I couldn't, I couldn't have worked it out any better. The good Lord just, he allowed me to, he allowed me to see a special part that meant something really special to me and still does. And one particular night in Mr. Jim's dressing room, he had gone out to play his spot. And I had my Bill Merritt acoustic guitar that was built for me. And when you face the back dressing room wall, it was nothing but glass for 20 feet and 10 feet high and had all the, the round lights on the side so the stars could look inside the, you know, the reflection of the glass and see that they looked spotless and perfect. And then they'd get out on that stage and do their thing. Well, Mr. Jim had got out to do his thing and I took that guitar and I was sitting there just playing away, looking at that reflection in the mirror of me and watching me play and just thinking, well, who knows, maybe someday I'll be out there doing this. And I was playing a song. The song was called Gold Rush. And just me and that guitar. And I just no more gotten into it. There's nobody in that dressing room, but the door was open behind me where they had gone out to the stage. And while I was just getting into the song, a figure walked by that door and that figure was the legendary father of bluegrass, Mr. Bill Monroe. Now, Mr. Monroe was elderly at the time, and he passed away in 1996, September of. So this was 94, 95. And he walked by, and Mr. Monroe was always dressed to the nines, and I mean, it's, we're talking about Bill Monroe, the father of bluegrass. <laughs> well. What I was doing caught his ear, and there was a reason. He walked by, he disappeared, but all of a sudden his image just filled the doorway and in he come. And he walked right up to me, and of course I stopped what I was doing and he said to me, give me that guitar boy, I'm gonna show you how to play my song. Because the song that I was playing, Gold Rush, was written by Bill Monroe. And I believe also Mr. Byron Berlin also wrote the song, but Somebody snapped a picture of me just watching Mr. Monroe playing my guitar, showing me how to play Gold Rush. So, 
there's a little memory of music through the mind of me that I want to share with you. But now, let me see if I can perform this song that I've been working on just to get my right hand going, my ear trained a little bit, just to work on clarity, you know, just the things that we forever pursue as musicians, trying to get a little bit better for ourselves. I sure hope you enjoy this effort. And here's Mr. Monroe's classic called Gold Rush. I'm trying to do something different and I ain't get it. So let me try it one more time. Mm-hmm. 